Hello again. Were you tempted to call the movie The Silence? <laughs> the Silence? There's a, there's a lot of silence no, in the film. Actually, they are talking a lot. They are people working in a publishing company and um, busy with working with words yeah. and talking a lot. So the, the, the screenplay was full of dialogue, to be honest. <laughs> but it doesn't feel like that, maybe. Yeah. So could you start maybe about the starting part, like, you know, like the, the writing uh, before the directing, since you just mentioned there was a lot of dialogues. Um, uh, to start? Yeah, um, it's difficult to to kind of uh, uh, yeah, say there was a starting point. It's rather that you kind of circle, uh, um, I kind of circle around like characters and, and, and questions and topics I have. And um, I couldn't say this was the, f the, the, the moment I started to, to write that movie. It was um, all in my backpack already. And then um, yeah, but, but I think I, w I went to London Film School and did a screenwriting master there and, um, and that was kind of the starting point and um, all I had was the character, uh, Jana and her boyfriend, as like, like every character um, except of Martin and, um, and the scene in front of the door, <laughs> that was the first scene I've written. Which is really strange and crazy, but it's it's true, and um, and the, the 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 entire development was rather about those characters and rather in this uh, Romer um, way of portraying a, 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 like a system of characters and how they interact and depend on each other, and it was not um, yeah it was was I think it was it it was rather about like the questions I had and the, and, and, and the, 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 like the entire field of self-determination and the free will which is uh, a very, very very much a topic for me than about um, anything else and the rape scene if you call it a rape scene but I mean officially it's it's a rape scene but she doesn't call it like that um, came into the script and only in the second draft so before that it was about yeah, the denial of failure, the denial of being a victim, those characters interacting with each other. But yeah, this this situation that is now so present in the film for so many um, people in the audience uh, was coming very late to the script. Uh, can you also talk about your collaboration with the uh, actress who plays Jana? Like, yeah. when you were writing, did you you already knew her? No. Or? Okay. No, so no. you were not writing for her. No, no, no. And when you, you she she's wonderful in yeah, the she's film. So and, and great. Yeah, I it, love it. So it's it's it seems like a perfect collaboration. Yeah. But can you talk a little bit more about yeah. that? Yeah, I can. Um, so um, I, I met her through the very classic way of casting. Um, uh, the casting director uh, suggested her and she came um, to the casting and she was like the worst of all. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> because she's, um, she's coming from the theater. She's uh, at uh, Burg Theater in Vienna, which is a well-known and quite famous theater in, in Europe. And um, she's used to, to act in front of uh, like 1,400 people. So everything she, she did was totally in her body and got a, like a physical translation of what I, what I was asking her to do. And so she was all over the place and uh, just had so much energy. But I fell in love with her as a, as a person because she, she is so, she's very, very intelligent and very, very intuitive at the same time. So I really had the feeling she understood what I was talking about and was really touched by the character. And so I thought, okay, then I have this, this person I really want to collaborate and I really uh, like and love and, and, and be fascinated by. And I have all this energy, and this story is about like controlling and hiding and 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 function. So I, yeah, my task would be to, to hide all this energy she brought um, to that casting and all this physics to kind of suppress it. And um, and I think that is 
the, the yeah that is some maybe some of the energy you could see on screen now that it's all there but kind of suppressed and the other thing that helped a lot um, was that she's actually coming from theater so she's used to not have this um, kind of uh, vision that she is working to and I'm working the same way I'm just coming to to uh, on set and she's coming to the rehearsal and then everything is going to explore it. and um, that's what we did it's not that I had an idea of the scene um, how it should be at the end of the day but rather ruling really is exploring the entire field and, and, and everything we found was part of the truth and everything we found was uh, something that was um, yeah, interesting and touching and we took all of it. Um, the style of the film is also uh, nearly surprising considering the, the topic but you use a very, very naturalistic approach and, and so are you close to the Berlin Film School um, or do, have you been maybe in collaboration with, um, you know, like Marin or Ulrich, and, and is that a collaboration that you, maybe not a collaboration, but maybe an inference or something that you would aspire to, even so you have a very, like, particular style? Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, um, I, I, I know and admire um, their films, and uh, Uli was a big, he was. Uh, he had a big influence on the movie. He was my mentor on the movie, so um, yeah, my, phew, he was so yeah. He was so good and powerful for the movie. Um, he always told me. He always said that it was. This is the story that I always uh, used to tell. It, that um, how do you say this? Uh, the the, the, the zip in the trouser. I guess you yeah. the trouser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the trouser zip. So uh, he always said, "Okay, we filmmakers have to um, take care of each other, and we have to um, uh, say each other if the the zip of the trouser oh, is okay. is open when, you, when your zipper is open." Okay, yeah, yeah, when your zipper is open. You, you got me worried yeah. there. <laughs> and that's what he did, like really harsh, and all the time he really um, make me aware of my open zipper <laughs> all the time so he was uh, he was he was very important for the movie but um i never i never i never was thinking about doing a berlin school movie or or something like that i really um for me it was clear that if i have this topic and if i have i mean i never i never planned to do a movie about a topic because i don't believe in to in subject movies at all um, but in the moment, I knew it was it was about all those characters and the different perspectives. And I wrote the script from every perspective once, so I came very close to each of the characters. For me, it was totally clear that I can't use any filmic means to kind of manipulate or push the story or, or stress something. And so it was clear for me that I won't use any music or um, really be, yeah, like be, like I've, I always said, we are kind of a, like the guest of of the characters, and they they exist on their own, and we can we can just get a glimpse and just can, yeah, um, be be their guest, but they won't do anything for us, and I won't push them in any direction. So, so for you, uh, you see her as a victim, or like the way that she. She's hiding what what's happening, and she doesn't talk about it. Like, or it's very like she tries to, but she can't do it. So, what do you what do you think of her as a victim, not a victim? Like, it obviously it's a problem for our survival and our mental state. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's both. Um, and that's how I see the world <laughs> somehow. Um, of course, she is a victim, but on the other hand, she is a, she's she's a perpetrator as well, and she is a very strong person who kind of um, uh, who 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 claims that she can determine herself what harms her and what not, and um, she claims to. Not claims, but how do you say? Um, she she wants to to be in charge of um, her her own 
decisions and, and, and self-determination. So I think that the, the fact that she, she doesn't speak about it, it's not only that she's so traumatized and, and suppresses everything, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very conscious decision as well because she says okay i mean she's she she's a she's a sophisticated modern young woman and she read the existentialists and she's working in this publishing company and she is not considering herself as the weak sex and she's she's kind of a nihilist so she knows when man and woman end up in a boat's house together at the end of the evening having drunk having drink have, have been drinking a lot Everything could happen. So and then and then this happens to her, and she doesn't consider herself as a victim or a rape victim. Um, not even not even that. Yeah, at least. And um, and then and then she 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 had that that experience and um, says, okay, I have I have the choice now. I can kind of go down that road with all this. Um, images and all this charged energy of being a rape victim in our society or I can just focus on what I want to focus which is the job and, and, and my relationship and, and it's just one and a half minutes of bad sex so who cares and, and so somehow this is a very yeah this is a very conscious and strong decision too and on this, at the same time, of course, she is a victim and she suppresses something. So that's what I um, said, that if you have questions and I can't give you an answer, I, I, I don't have an answer because I think both is true. I love, I love the, the ending of the film um, where clearly so many things are going into her head and she seems to refuse everything in our past. So can we maybe talk about this before we open it up to the public? Yeah, the ending is interesting because I mean, um, we did a lot of improvisation and I, I didn't expect the movie to be that close to the script as it now turns out to be. But the ending was different <laughs> in the script and, um, and I had, um, yeah, the, the ending in the script was like the, the, the attempt to give some direction and it was that the police people are coming and, and asking her for the first time or not asking her all good and she says for the first time no and then they let her go <laughs> and when I shot it I was so grumpy and I felt like ah, I'm pushing it I'm raping the story I just I can't do it and but we shot it and then in the editing room pff, I think we even we, we not even watched it once. It was so clear that I can take responsibility for the story until exactly that point, and after that, it would be a claim, or it would be that, uh, yeah, what I just said, pushing it in a certain direction. So, for me, this I, I can't I can't say what happened afterwards. I just could feel that this character, who's always in motion, who's always trying to handle things for the first time is still for the first time the wheels stand still and and there was rather the impulse than um, giving a message or a, or a, yeah or or a direction at the ending uh, we can take questions from the audience and we have some microphones so i see someone there and then here Oh, there's some either way. <laughs> well, yeah, it, where was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a very beautiful, elegant film. Um, it's, it's very wonderful. Um, so you said um, you wrote the script based on all these different characters, so like they're completely like alive in some ways in your head. And then how did you, in the process of filmmaking, how did you, because you said you didn't direct them, you just let them exist as they are. So what was the sort of like, um, and then you did a lot of improvisation with them. So many of the scenes, like dialogues were, um, they were improvising. So I just wanted to hear about the process of like translating the complete script and complete characters into just kind of this free, natural environment. 
So you mean the, the from the script to the to the shooting process, or from the shooting process to the to the final film? Uh, from the script to the shooting process, like mm -hmm. in in terms of directing the actors. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, the the the, the script. <laughs> we had really uh, we had really problems funding it uh, in in Germany because the script was nobody nobody knew what it was about because the script was like a play. And for the actor, there was just bare bones dialogue. And for the actors, I even uh, um, get rid of all the directing stuff and every single p paragraph of uh, um, other kind of yeah, describing lines. So they just had the, the pure dialogue. And then, um, and then what we did is um, we we were every take had a different attitude and a different aim for each character, and I spoke to them separately, and then then um, they could kind of explore the scene on their own without knowing what what the other character would do or the other actor would do or would aim for in the scene, which made it like every take alive and they were curious and they had to really listen to each other and, 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 and observe each other. Um, that, that helped a lot and when I felt that the scene was uh, like dead because we did it too much for example, I, I always said okay you can use every, every single other word that comes into your mind and then we did for example like silent takes as well. Um, but I think the main thing was really to to give another attitude and temperature to each take, and then because I think I really think you only can act one thing at the time. You can only feel one thing at the time. You can't feel a little bit excited but a little bit sad at the same time. But you can um, act it one like after each other. And then, and then that was that was what I what I just described with the feel that I had this basket and put everything I found in that basket, and then I could I could uh, mix it up in the editing. So the 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 scenes or the takes that you or the, yeah the, the the scenes that you see are a mixture out of all those different temperatures and and takes we've done. There's a question right there. Just Thanks. I wanted to ask again about the ending, because you said it. Uh, I wasn't sure it was improvised. Um, this the character Martin gets into what may be an accident, what may be self harm because of what happened before, and then Jana wants to get arrested um, or get in trouble, get get herself punished in some way, and at the same time, she's holding the people kind of hostage on the train, which is what was happening to her, and my, my question was, are you, uh, often trauma survivors, or when they avoid processing what happens, they enact something that, that shows what happened to other people. Um, so it's almost as if, I mean, she's not raping the people, but she's holding them against their will, and they end up hating her at the same time. So I was just wondering what, how much of that was planned, or? It's interesting, interesting view. No, really, no, really. It's in, I think, yeah. I think, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting view. I think for, for, for me, uh, as, I, as I said, it was just this moment of, of the wheels uh, standing still for the first time. And then the other thing is that she's, I mean, she's, she's that character who's always trying to make things function and, and be... be, be Likeable and and uh, if if yeah if if she gets chicken not tofu she would say ah oh, it's fine yeah. so that's that's her character somehow this like very easygoing girl which is just such a stupid <laughs> thing I, I mean I, I totally understand her and I love her but uh, but still I think we are on a wrong track with that attitude. But that's, that's her attitude and the way she, she stands in the world. And then for the first time, it doesn't matter that the people are looking at her and that she doesn't function anymore. And it's, I think that was something that was important for me that, that this people in the train for a moment 
have are forced to kind of stick with her and 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 not being the world for her that she has to uh, react hmm. something like that maybe yeah. so lady there I don't really want to beat a dead horse, but I uh, did want to comment on the ending. What you said was um, in the script and then what you decided. We all knew throughout the entire film that it wasn't all good. So you didn't Can you speak a little loud? We all knew throughout the entire film that it wasn't all good. When you mentioned the ending that you were thinking about versus the ending that you selected, it was the perfect ending. We didn't need for someone to ask her, was it all good? And we didn't need for her to say no, because she made it very clear in her um, uneasiness, her crying, her emotion, the abortion, whose kid is it? I mean, it was, she did a great job. But my question actually was, at what point in the drafts did you decide to put Martin in the ICU? Because I already hated him from the beginning of the film. <laughs> And I was happy that the, the, the um, it was name Martin. In the ICU, what is it? Oh. Intensive care, yes. You put Martin in intensive care. So I'm curious at what point in the draft you did that because I was never going to like him. I don't care if he was in a car accident. I was actually happy. <laughs> you, you should have just killed him right away. <laughs> um. Yeah, now I have to disappoint you because I like him a lot. Oh. <laughs> I like all of them. <laughs> um, otherwise, I couldn't tell about them. I just couldn't. If I hate someone, I'm, I'm just not interested in the evil. The evil is so boring and closed down and just they're, they're, I don't have any questions. And I, and I, could, I couldn't write and direct people who are who are not try at least to understand and that's what I did and I came very far um, even with the character of Martin and I totally understand that you that you that you don't have those feelings for him and that you kind of uh, reject him from the very beginning that's fine but um, for me, as I told you, I, I wrote the, the script from each perspective of all the characters. So um, for me, it was clear that I w want Martin to be a person who has a very clear compass of, uh, of her, his, uh, his moral values. And he's very, he's very determined about what is wrong and what is right in comparison to Jana, who's, as I said, a nihilist and much more... Hmm, I don't know. I don't trust my feelings. I'm just that rational girl. So he's he's very k kind of conservative in a way, and I was interested interested in how does a character like like him really tries to integrate that what what happened into his self image somehow like a mirror for for Janne who's trying to get the fact that she, she that she's been a victim into her self image he has to yeah handle this and he really for me tries the hardest he can to do that and um, people would say oh he's a wimp and he's a coward and he's like he's not a he, he could whatever go to the police but if he would go to the police afterwards it would be another assault because he would decide for her and obviously she doesn't want to talk about it. So if he would decide for her, it would be, yeah, pushing her a second time. So, yeah, this dilemma that he tries to do the best he can afterwards but um, doesn't have any means was interesting for me. Was there any more question on the other side? Yeah. There's a question here. Hi. Um, so it's interesting you said that you're, when you were working with the actors, a lot of it was improvised. You would do different things on different takes and you didn't necessarily know what you were gonna do before it happened. I'm curious, 
does that reflect your directing style as well? Like, did you have certain shots you knew, like, you had to get, no matter what, you needed these three or four shots, or did you work very closely in terms of planning things, or was it just as improvised in terms of the camera? Um, so as we didn't, didn't know w how the scene um, is going to evolve, it, it, was, it was kind of following the situation, but we had a concept, so, and the concept was that we wouldn't, wouldn't um, shoot anyone like from the front, but uh, just yeah, b b just just observing them and being behind them and following them and not being, for example, in rooms before they enter the room. So we just n we never knew more than they would, and um, so that was that w that was a clear concept or a rule that we set, and uh, that helped a lot to find the the kind of the the right attitude in terms of camera. Um, and yeah, and but then I, I really have to admit. I mean, we, we had we had a we had a, sh a shot list for for each scene. Of course, we we were very well prepared. <laughs> but um, but then sometimes we were really surprised how a scene would uh, develop in which direction, and then and then everything we planned before was kind of uh, not true anymore. So every take was. A different shot, and a, and a different uh, so every every attitude, every temperature of a take needed another uh, temperature and energy of the camera work as well. And I was very happy to f to have found uh, um, Julian Krobasik, who is very intuitive and just um, coming from the documentary, of course. Um, so he he could really adapt and like feel what what was needed. Uh, we have time for one or two more questions. I wanted to know if anyone else wanted to talk to Eva, if there's someone here. I was wondering, um, kind of um, towards the end of the film, I was feeling that there's another theme because both the Martin and his sister um, were aggressive to, to the people that, uh, you know, possibly they cared about. And so I was wondering if there was any moment in the script development where you actually tried to sort of, um, you know, tell a little more about that, if, or if that even was something that you intended that, you know, it often happens that there is a, you know, a family background for people who are aggressive. Um, so when I started writing, Robert and Sissy were the main characters. <laughs> So, um, so this entire dynamic between them was uh, already in the script, and it's rather a coincidence that I really uh, discovered via the the reaction on the script and the audience afterwards that they are sister uh, siblings and both aggressive. For me, it it wasn't um, it didn't it didn't play any role because for me every character in that in that story is tender it's to a certain degree and aggressive and for me it's rather interesting um, in in all those uh, discussions with the with the audience that the the, the, the physical aggressiveness is um, for, for example f of uh, Pete as well he's very choleric and impulsive that this is pointed out that much and all the psycho psycho psy psychological aggressiveness or like cynical aggressiveness and being detached to your feelings and to, 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 to the people you are in relationship with, with is not that um, is not that stigmatized yeah. and I think that's just interesting just just as a as an observation um, in our society that is yeah maybe understand what I mean. And there's a question right here. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the wonderful film. I wanted to ask about the cat scene. Um, I, I just thought, wow, that, that kind of went along with the film, you know, and, and 
kind of add it to the the wife and her jealousy and it was excellent but i just wanted to ask at what point you put that in the cat scene, the cat scene was uh, in the script uh, fr almost from the very beginning it was uh, and it, it it rather it was as i said it was like rather this portrayal romer whatever kind of cinema that I first planned, and um, if I would do the movie again, <laughs> I would open it up for this a little bit more again. So this cat scene was just this this longing to 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 make movies and see movies where th that are not too economical and not too much focusing on the plot and the theme and something that is um, that is the engine of the movie, but have this things. That, that are life in a certain way that happens at the same time. I mean, your, your, your mom is dying and still your, your kid is having whatever, uh, a play at kindergarten and, and then breaks his ankle or whatever. So this simultaneously, simultaneously of, of things and, um, was, was always uh, important for me and the cat was like uh, yeah, the first first uh, element of this um, simultaneously so that she's she just experienced a rape, but the, the the job is important as well, and and then she's coming to that house, but there is an entire life going on with that cat and with all the, these other problems. So like yeah, putting it together and make it rich. Um. Any further question? <coughs> I, I do have one for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, the movie we uh, was in Locarno, so that's close to a year ago. So are you working on anything new? Or are you still like touring with this film and talking about it? Or like maybe trying to move for the next project? Uh, yeah, I do. I just, um, I just uh, got the funding for, for, my, for my next project. So not shooting, but writing it. So, uh, so writing it first. Yeah, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so I have a treatment and um, yeah, got the funding two months ago and started to write. And my, my festival journey is somehow has come to an end <laughs> with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, the movie is showing you again tomorrow night at yeah. MoMA and then it's going to be on Netflix. So it's not quite the end, but we're also very much looking forward to the next work from you okay. already. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.